today I'm standing as a mother, a sister, a wife, a friend. Today, I lost someone very dear to me, raped by eight men, killed. Read yourself to our kids for crying out loud. What wrong have we done to you? This government. Great set to good luck, Jonathan Ebele. Thank you for being a good man. It is now we are realizing that you are such an, a very nice, honest man. Thank you, good luck, Jonathan Ebele. Tomorrow, if you come out, we will vote you. Of course. Baba, you are a fair one. Great set to good luck, Jonathan Ebele. Thank you for being a good man. It is now we are realizing that you are such an, a very nice, honest man. Thank you, good luck, Jonathan Ebele. Tomorrow, if you come out, we will vote you. Of course. Baba, you are a fair one. Great set to good luck. All right, welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. You just uh, watched the clip there, Kotsi uh, Roots TV. Uh, that's one of the protesters uh, just uh, talking about uh, the issues in the north, the constant and wanton killings of um, northerners, and they are saying enough is enough. Let me just give a bit of a background. Uh, a group under the auspices of North is Bleeding on Wednesday staged a protest in Abuja over killings in the north. It was learned that the police arrested some of the protesters who came in large number, no fewer than five protesters and two journalists you know, were arrested. A burn placards, the protesters under the ages of the North-South Alliance and Take It Back movement converged on the Medical and Health Union Secretariat in Abuja. They urged the labor leaders to join in the campaign in demanding an end to the killing by bandits. We have joining us uh, this morning two gentlemen, one from Kaduna, uh, Mustafa Bolama, a journalist and editorial cartoonist for the Daily Trust uh, newspaper. Thank you, uh, Mustafa, for joining us. All right, we also have Ibrahim Hussein Abdul Karim. He's the MD, uh, AZGIS Limited. He is joining us via Zoom from Abuja. Let me start with you, Mustafa. You know, the Secure North, uh, North is Bleeding protest that started sometime on Wednesday, and uh, lots of people, you know, were reportedly uh, arrested, and journalists too, you know, were also arrested in the process. Can you give us a background on um, what really happened at that particular protest? Mustafa, can you hear us? All right, uh, let's uh, bring Ibrahim Hussein Abdul Karim. He's the MD Easy GIS Limited from Zoom. Ibrahim, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you very well, loud and clear. All right, uh, let's talk about this killings. You know, it's been going on, you know, for quite some time now. Indeed, if you check the pages of newspapers uh, this morning, what you see is uh, banditry, insurgency, and uh, we even hear that uh, farmers are even paying to harvest, you know, their crops in some part of the north. You know, what's the situation, and um, uh, what exactly are your thoughts concerning all of that? Uh, the situation is really pathetic. Um, there is nobody that will think of uh, by the turn of the year or by the turn of the moment in the first century, Nigeria will sink this low. Uh, the moment that we see that the best thing that we can have is democracy, uh, people for uh, government for the people, and uh, it's a moment that we see government supposed to be more close to that people than before. Uh, this kind of system to now collapse like this in front of everybody with all the structures that we have. I think um, it's a failure that come from the, the weak uh, institutions that we have. At least we are things that started eroding and then everybody feels comfortable, everybody sees it's okay. If you have your money, you just uh, pick your children and take them abroad. If you are sick, you go abroad. If you are everything, you just allow the whole system to keep on decay. So I think what really happened that some of the institutions, like the religious institutions, uh, they are left out of the system, the traditional council system are not performing anything. They don't even have a role in their constitution for what they're supposed to do. So I think this is what really creates that vehicle. And then the level of education that was dropping and the Almagri issue is coming up everywhere. 
And then when we start to the IDPs and people are seeing the bombs coming up and then people are losing their families, nobody thought of uh, to put up a solution, something to now fight over and, and do a projection. If we have this number of people outside not doing anything, definitely something is going to come up in the next five years, the next 10 years. But because actually uh, we have a leadership and a system that uh, people are not uh, solving problem. If you can look at Nigeria, for example, let's just look at Lagos. Uh, Lagos having been pulled up since 1978, 1980s. Up to today, we have the same problem with uh, Lagos. Uh, if you look at um, uh, the, the, the Asuda Agwilma strike today or tomorrow, uh, if you read out what they are saying and what they want, why they want to go for a strike, and you pick up a newspaper of 1980s and then and the 90s and read what why are we going on strike, you see it's the same thing that they are complaining, the same in all, all structure. So actually, uh, I think uh, we 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 so much uh, relaxed in, uh, and then we, we 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 turn our political system not to look for people that have competence. We are just looking for people that belong to our own tribe and people that belong from. Uh, that come from our own religion and other things like that. So to lack of that nationalistic uh, ideologies and then vision and mission for a nation to move forward really kill everything. So when people reach a level that they don't have anything uh, as hope for them to what they will do, then they will stop to solve help. And then the issue of the banditry just uh, escalated because uh, the people that are in charge of what they're supposed to do are not taking care of the, the masses, for example. Uh, there is different between ruling and, 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 and leadership. Leadership is you do lead people to exactly why you want them to go, why they want to go to. But in the, the government that we have after the first, uh, after uh, the previous government, uh, at least didn't put up anything, any energy, any 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 relationship between them and the people, so that they can secure the whole system. And then up here in the north, um, I think we have a lot of uh, the key, not only in terms of. Uh, security issue only but our moral values drop seriously down and uh, we we allow everything to go and then we start to realize that now we have already uh, shot ourselves with the foot uh, if you see the people are uh, marauding and killing people in the name of this bandit they are they are they are they are northerners they are people from maybe the same tribe or the same religion with uh, the people that are killing and also all the way they are killing the poor uh, in the north so the killing is something that, that is very horrific and nobody will understand it unless when you are staying here on the north. There is no any family in the north that is not affected with this banditry and this criminality because these criminals, some of them are collecting ransom, maybe they are doing it for, 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 for some gain. Some are just going into villages and just kill people. Uh, if you even ask them why are they even killing people and burning their farmlands and things like that, there is no even any answer to that. So this is the highest level of terrorism. This is the this is the the, 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 the anything that you can think of that, that that how can a human being go to this loop? So I always tell people that uh, when I when we started the hashtag uh, still not, um, uh, we we realized that uh, we we just have to come together. Uh, we have a movement that we all be together. So we actually calling people to come together and let's do it ourselves. Uh, we don't have to rely on the uh, government to do everything for us. We're supposed to partner. We are government. We are the one that give the legitimacy for any government to work. And we can even withdraw our legitimacy if we feel that government is not working. Because the ultimate goal for any government is for them to protect, protect lives and property. So I think that we have to go beyond the hashtag. Uh, the hashtag and protest is just for us to, 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 to register our grievances. But we have to organize our people. We have to find a way where we can make our system work, make the North work, because the North is pulling the whole nation down, not really because they don't know what to do, but because they don't have leadership. They don't have leadership from their houses, they don't have leadership from their immediate community, and they don't have leadership in their schools. And then drugs have already entered everywhere, and then we are facing the price now, and we are suffering from what we have created and the monster we have created ourselves. All right, let's see if we can bring Mustafa Bulama. Uh, Mustafa, can you hear us? Hello, Mustafa. Okay, so I, I probably just, you know, um, uh, change the question then to you back now. 
Now, there are some quotas that are saying, following the protest that's happened, I mean, that's the hashtag. As much as you're saying that we need to move beyond the hashtag, but of course, uh, you would also want to agree with me that protest is a tool that has been used by different climes and people in different countries to demand uh, from the government good governance and what have you. The list will be endless. Now, some people are saying that the North is secure, that everything is perfect. I mean, the president... Uh, you know, has provided so much security and all of that, that this could just be, uh, you know, element, some persons who are trying to run down the administration of uh, President Muhammad Buhari. I I'd like to find out from you. Uh, yeah, you are leaving that particular axis, and I'm sure that you are in tune with what's going on. What is the situation with the knot? Is it secure? Is it safe? What is going on? True picture of it. Far, 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 far away from that, nobody will say the North is secure. There is nobody in the North, being a governor, being a, a businessman, being just a local person driving your car, being in the, one of the lowest of the lowest of the society. Nobody, even a traditional council leaders, I think it now, nobody will tell you that the North is secure. There is nobody, even the people that are in government, none of them can come on television and tell you that the North is secure. They knew that the we are in trouble and the North is not secure. But let me just uh, digress a, a little bit. Um, the system that they created and all the, the insecurity we have seen, no matter how government wants to solve the problem, they need the buy-in of the people. And they cannot buy, get that buy-in from people unless the government show it, its own side of the being a government, show empathy, talk to people, bring them closer, tell them what you are doing. because. These people are the ones that are supposed to give you the intel that you need for you to take care of the problem that we see in the floor. So government alone cannot work. Government has to work with the people. But those people must get that confidence from government. Because if you now tell government that this person that I know in my area is a bandit, for example, or he belongs to a social place, then the guy, will, the police maybe will come, arrest the person. In two days, three days, you don't see that same person out of the out of the out of the out of the government uh, 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 this thing. so immediately he comes first the first person there he's going to attack is what he's going to attack that person that reported him so people are not willing to give because there is no any custody protection for anybody that is giving uh, 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 information to like being an informant for the government so out of that one then these people are not being uh, when we started in Kaduna for example in the early names during the uh, this project. Uh, uh, sectoral uh, issues and things like that that started to come up, come up. There is nobody that is being punished. There is no system that is put in place to stop that. And it's continued from Kaduna to Jos to Taraba to a lot of places having this small sectoral problem. And then people start to take side, people start to align themselves with their tribe. And then nobody is seen it as a danger. If people are fighting of tribe, for a very long time, you will be very assured that one day they will start to fight on their religious lines. And once they started, the whole system will break down on them. Actually, I always tell people when I'm talking is that uh, justice and peace, like just like a twins, twin brothers or twin, 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 twin uh, sisters, they live and work and act together. Any right. place you see justice, you always see peace. And then without justice and peace, you cannot get prosperity. What we miss in this nation is that we don't have that clear leadership of people that will understand that there is a problem. If you accept the problem, if you go on television and say there is no problem in the North and the North is killed, that means you are seriously uh, undermining the exactly what is happening. All right, thank you, If you Ibrahim. fail, you can fail as a leader. All right, thank you, Ibrahim. We'll I'll still get back to you uh, concerning all of those issues that you have raised. But let's uh, bring uh, Mustafa Bulama right now. Uh, Mustafa, you are in Kaduna State. Uh, can you bring us up to speed concerning the issues? Uh, because uh, in Niger State, we hear reports of bandits collecting levies. You know, then there's been several attacks along the Kaduna Abuja Expressway. What exactly is going on right now? The protest also holding in Kaduna. All right, thank you for having me. Um, the, the, the problem I, I think we are having here, um, the fact that the DSS is even coming out to intimidate police are coming with these people, 
uh, what we call the DSS addition uh, statement, telling people to be careful what they say, to do this, what. So, these are not the issues that it needs to put itself, you know, in. People in Nigeria have the right to come out and express their when they are being hurt or something like that, uh, the constitution of the federal Nigeria has given us the right to protest, right? So now I, I, I hear people are coming out to protest in Cairo or in Katina and the PSS are rounding them up. Therefore, people are, are, are afraid. So should we be afraid of the, 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 the crimes, the, the terrorism that is happening to us? Or should we be afraid of the people that are supposed to protect us. People are afraid to come out in Kaduna to even put Yes, because these are, these are the kind of issues that are happening. Look, uh, just uh, what we did yesterday or day before yesterday, Kaduna uh, to Zaria Road, so some people were adopted, uh, uh, what's it called, um, member of the House of uh, Assembly here in Kaduna were killed. You know, and we hear of the case of Abuja to what we call the to Abuja Road. Every time they have abduction and all of that, you go to Katina, it's it's trouble. Go to these rural communities in there is so forth everywhere. And then somebody comes from somewhere to tell you that North is secure. I don't think that uh, anything like that. You know. Everybody will tell you that even if you are outside the country, just open the news and you see what is happening. You don't even need any intelligence, any come and tell you that from. Okay. All right, uh, Mustafa. Well, just like my colleague has actually asked, uh, we're hoping to get an update of what actually, I mean, what really transpired uh, in that protest that happened. Do you have an idea? What happened? We hear that you know protesters were arrested and there were different man handling by uh, you know DSS and police officers. Well, I, I don't know. I wasn't at the protest, but um, what I what I know for sure is that uh, people are getting tired. I think um, earlier the government uh, stands up and actually do something really tangible. Um, this may get out of control, and we hope it doesn't. Because um, when people are suffering from poverty, and then there's, there's also insecurity, you know, and allow these people to come out to, to express themselves, um, they get out of hand. Because uh, especially when you try to resist or you try to tell them not to talk. In Hausa, the world we say, that somebody will beat you and will still stop you from crying, will tell you not to cry. You know? So I think uh, people need to be pacified and then also stand up and, and do what is right because uh, we can't continue like this. You know? We started talking about the Secure North last year in October. We came out to even protest, and then some good looks were sent in come and disrupt the protest. I got the protest. Fortunately for us, we were able to uh, get a win of that. So we, 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 we decided not to, uh, to continue with the protest. But this is how it has been happening. Uh, coalition of northern groups in, 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 in what you call it call for a meeting um, to discuss the, the security in northern Nigeria at Ariwa House. You know where Ariwa House is? It's a, uh, it's a prestigious place of honor and all of that. People, responsible people, were invited. But do you know what happened? They sent good loans to attack us there. This was not even a protest. It was a meeting. So who sent hoodlums to attack um, you at your meeting? We, we don't know them. We don't know. You know, people were actually attacked in Iowa House. We had to find some people who were jumping out of the window and so on. They destroyed the whole thing. 
So at the end of it, I said, that means there are people who are benefiting or who are, are, are happy with the situation we're in. Why would they send somebody to attack us, you know, uh, during a meeting? Traditional rulers were invited, former uh, military generals and whatever, responsible people were invited for that for that meeting. And some 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 useless somebody somewhere gathered some hoodlums to attack us there at Ariwa House. All right, Mustafa. Uh, let's um, let's um, bring um, Ibrahim once again into this conversation. Ibrahim, uh, from what you have said, uh, when uh, you give uh, a bit of an analysis, you talked about organizing your people uh, to make the North uh, great. You also talked about um, the issue of leadership. You know, so in all of this, uh, lots of statements have come out. Uh, you know, concerning that the federal government uh, said that um, insurgency uh, terrorism won't disappear overnight and they also said that government is working hard to tackle the issue of insecurity is it a thing of uh, you know the government are not really uh, having control of this issue of security despite what they are saying or just that uh, they don't really have the willpower to do what is required i think uh, uh, they are a little bit confused uh, because they're supposed to realize that it's the people that will help them to end the insecurity and if you are grandstanding, and if you are denying, and if you are telling Nigerians what they don't want to hear, or telling the people that you're supposed to kill, you are not going in the same direction with them, then you have a problem. What you're supposed is you accept the fault that, yes, we are trying our best, but this is our limitation. And we want you people to assist us in one, two, three, and four things that we want to adopt. Because if you put everything in secrecy, then the people are not understanding what you are doing and the help you are bringing. Then they get agitated. Then they get that, uh, that, that resentment will start to now set in and they start to hate the government. And then if people hate the government, then you are adding to, to the problem and you are not making any solution. So what I'm saying is that even if they say they are doing what they are supposed to be doing, us, I'm calling them to look inward, look at the people, create a platform where these people can vent their anger. As Mustafa is saying, if you restrict people even not to vent their anger, you are adding to the problem. Because that is the feedback you are getting. If they are up on the street protesting, protesting is that telling you that you have missed what you said you are doing. We are not seeing what you are doing. It's for the government to look at it, dialogue with them, give them their contacts. For example, if to say today I'm somebody in the part of that leadership that I've been seen, what I would do is that all these groups that are now planning to go on, because I was in a meeting yesterday and they, they are proposing to go in a bigger uh, motion of, uh, of of the skill not hashtag, which they are planning to do a bigger rally. What they are saying in the meeting uh, is a public something that is, I don't think it's something that is uh, is a secret for them. It's open. They are calling their men they said, because these big men and the people in the government, they are not using these roads that are people being, are being kidnapped every day. Why not shut down the railway station and then shut down the airports so that anybody that is going anywhere he wants to go to let him use that same road if because if they are using the same road that the other nigerians are using then they must kill that that place that people are going so if the if, if the if the, if the north really want to uh we want the north to be scared we have to talk to them in the language they understand i think protest is one of the language this government really understand even though they use the, the talks and then they use everything to bring but we think that in these talks that they are bringing we are more closer to the the talks than even the government. So we can talk to them because we are all in this together. If, we, if you give them drugs and everything, that's the way we can talk to them. We can get our old men, we can get our old women, we can get our destitute, we can go and just sit down on the wrong way in Canada, sit down in the wrong way in Canada, sit down in the wrong way. In Canada, the wrong way in so that everybody that is going for holiday, let him use that. Even if you are going for anything that you want to do, going for a wedding or anything that you're going to take a, a ride, go through the road from here to Nicaragua, from here to Sokoto, so that you can feel what other Nigerians are feeling. And those people that are being kidnapped, they start feeling the same thing they are feeling. These boys are going to grow bigger, they are going to grow because this not is not secured, and they are angry, and they are tired. So the government has to do something new, which we are not seeing anything coming out from government that is new, that is just, uh, they just condemn uh, any killing, they just send delegation, the, the even president himself that he is supposed to be in charge of the nation is not taking to Nigerians. People don't vote in his essays. They don't. They don't vote in his vote in his ministers. They voted in General 
Muhammadu Buhari as a president. I think empathy for, 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 for showing concern, he's supposed to directly talk to Nigerians at least every day. He can do it. And he's a president. He can talk to them in the morning. He can talk to them in the evening. Give them hope. Give them direction. Give them that energy. Us and we together, we are trying to convince and talk to almost all the other groups so that at least the protest and what we are planning to do is not going to go out of hand and somebody has to take responsibility. We don't want it to be like answers that it come and then destroy a lot of people and properties of other people. We want it to be something that is well coordinated, something with leadership and the people you're supposed to relate and go to if you want something on the street. The idea is that we are going to give the government the comfort that the skill uh, not protest is not going to be something that is going to cause too much trouble to the country, but it's something that at least we have to voice out. Uh, uh, we have to voice out what is happening and talk to the whole world to understand the, uh, the the problems here in the north, and then we see how we will work together with the government to see how we can secure the north. All right, let's bring in uh, uh, Mustafa Bulama. Well, like he's mentioned, the president in the course of this conversation, and you still also have uh, you know some quarters saying that. The reason why, you know, insecurity is persisting in Nigeria and mostly in the north is because of the body language of Mr. President. Now, if you want to agree with me, the federal government uh, or the government, however you want to put it, is saying that we have uh, identified those who are sponsoring terrorist group in Nigeria. We have identified sponsors. Uh, they've also agreed to the fact that, you know, the Niger state government saying, yes, we've also agreed to the fact that bandits are collecting taxes from the people. So uh, do you agree with the school of thought saying that uh, the body language of Mr. President is responsible for, you know, the current security challenges that we're faced with in Nigeria? Yeah, I, I, I think um, there's, there's a bit of truth that because... Um, you see, if sure, uh, you have people being killed, you have community ravaged, people destroyed, all you see at first the news of what you are being killed. Let's say, for example, recently in, in Koto, between the month of October and, and December, over a hundred people have been killed in Sokoto. In October, over 40 people were killed. In November, over 43 were killed. Then recently, with the, 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 the passengers that were attacked, we're talking about some are saying 21, some are saying 23, some are saying even 42. Understand, people who have been killed in Sokoto. Now, in October, the president did not come out to address the people of Sokoto. He did not go to Sokoto. He did not go to Sokoto in November. He did not go to Sokoto in December. But we are seeing the president going for a book launch in Lagos. He is going for a, what is it, a launching of a naval boat. In Lagos. Okay, fine. After all these things, he still didn't go to Sokoto. Right? And in midst of this, while we're talking about this, uh, uh, what you call it in Niger, 15 worshippers were gone down in the mosque. They were praying. They went there and killed these people. In the same local government, they did that in November. So twice. Now, I, I, I say, look, you know, people in Northern Nigeria, especially in rural communities, they listen to radio a lot. They listen to be house, and they listen to house services and all of that. Why would it take the president or his advisors or whatever get the BBC to interview the president? So that he talks to people in the language they even understand, the outside language they understand. Uh, uh, Mustafa, Mo Mustafa, I'm sorry I have to come in at this point. I, I want to understand yes. how, you know, the president's visiting 
uh, this community would solve the problem of insecurity in Nigeria. You're saying the president needs to go there, speak to the people. Uh, how does that yes. translate? Because uh, the issue of saying we have identified those who are sponsoring bandits, let's not forget that lawmakers have actually called in different quarters saying we need to proscribe this group of persons as terrorists. And that has not happened. And if we have identified those who are sponsoring, what are we doing about that? So is it about the president visiting these places? Or it's about the president, uh, being that he controls the security architecture. I mean, it's within the federal, uh, you know, uh, it's within the exclusive uh, list, right? So is it about the visiting or taking uh, proactive actions? Let's see arrests. Let's see persons about prosecuted. If we have people who are sponsoring, if we know that uh, uh, bandits are already paying taxes and they're paying, and we're agreeing to it. So it means we know where they are. We know who these people are. How come we have not had persons arrested and prosecuted? What is going on? So I, I don't understand when you say that, you know, the president needs to visit. Does visiting really translate into stopping all of these issues and putting an end to all of this insecurity concerns? All right. Let me give the right answer now. See, there are two things. The, the issue of in, this particular insecurity we are having is not something you go and you know, you switch it off, like you can turn off the light or something. A war is something the government has to fight, and it's something that is going to take a long time, right? But while the government is doing that, also needs to reassure its people that if this is what it's doing. It needs to show empathy to the victims. It needs to concern to the people. Now, going back to the issue of the people, um, the sponsors that are being identified and all of that, yes, that's also another issue. How can you come out and tell us you have identified these people or you know the people that are sponsoring and yet you don't do anything about it? So it still comes down to the issue of the body language you are talking about. Okay, if you know these people, um, you have identified them, why are we not seeing arrest? Right? I, I remember they were talking about these families that were bought. They said, okay, they cannot attack these people because the condition is that only use it to attack terrorists. But okay, now they have, um, the court has ruled that these people are terrorists. So get to work, right? What we are concerned about, nobody is, 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 um, about any other or the political whatever they want to do. The issue is are dying. And this needs to stop. Right? This oh, and he, the people that are doing they are not arresting them. What are they telling us? If they have identified the groups and we have not seen arrest, we have not seen uh prosecution what, what, what are you telling the people? And this is why people keep feeling that the government is not doing enough. The government is not doing enough. All right, thank you, Mustafa. Let's um, have the final word from Ibrahim Hussein Abdul Karim as um, we round off on this discussion. Uh, Mustafa has um, said his um, point of view, but you know, in all of this now, what do we expect to see in the coming days uh, from the Secure North, uh, North is Bleeding um, hashtag? Uh, are we seeing more protests? And uh, are you going beyond protest? Or what exactly you know, is in the offing? Actually, are going to see more more, more protest because uh, uh, protest is just asking questions. Uh, I think we are going to protest online. We are going to protest uh, uh, on the on the on the ground. We are going to organize uh, seminars. We are going to so, so organize Zoom meetings. We are going to do a lot of things that will help us to see we get to the end of this uh, problem because we cannot normalize killings. There is no any other place in the world that somebody or a government or group of people will normalize. Uh, uh, insecurity or normalized killings. We have to talk about it. Uh, our, our traditional council system has to talk about it. Our religious leaders has to talk about it. Then anybody that feels like he has something to offer must talk about it. We have to start to talk it, but we have to organize our people. We don't want it to be something that is uh, out of hand, something that we cannot control. Uh, we have our, another hashtag we are going to use, whatever, so that at least we, we organize that activity. 
we, we I think we have some small meetings in the smaller groups, and then we are going to move that meetings to a bigger and larger forum. All right. Actually, we have to talk about it, and we have to make sure that we secure the not not only secure the not we secure the country, and also to make sure that at least we have a very good 2022 because in the election a year to election, which is an election year, which is going to have more violence than what. All right. Thank you, Ibrahim. So we have. All right, uh, a very big thank you to you, Ibrahim Hussein Abdul Karim, MD, EZGIS Limited, Abuja. And of course, uh, also to Mustafa Bola, my editorial cartoonist, Daily Trust. Uh, uh, the gentlemen both joined us to discuss on the issue of um, security in the North. Indeed, uh, the North, the entire Nigeria, you know, needs to be uh, secured. In a moment, uh, when we come back from this uh, quick break, we'll be talking about uh, the Gender Opportunities Bill in a moment. Do join us again. <laughs> 